Good morning! Let's make five egg exciting breakfasts together. First up, an omelette. I'm gonna start by cracking two eggs, separating the whites from the yolks into two separate bowls. I'm putting the egg whites in the larger bowl so we have enough room when we whip them up later. Then with a hand mixer on high speed, I'm gonna whisk the egg whites until stiff peaks form. You can tell that it gets to stiff peaks when the egg whites start to look kind of glossy and when you turn the whisk over, little meringue kisses form right on top. Okay, now onto our egg yolk. I just take the same hand mixer that I use and give it a whisk just until they break up. This doesn't take as long at all. Then I'll grab half a cup of the egg whites and mix it directly into the yolks to loosen things up. Don't be afraid to go hard in this process. You just want to beat it really well so that it could combine well with the egg whites later. There's a few steps in this whole process, I know, but it's all about the mix, mix, mix. Okay, now transfer that egg yolk mixture into the egg whites and we'll just gently fold the egg whites until the mixture is is fully combined. It's amazing how much volume you get just by whipping up two eggs like this. Incredible, but now we get to cook off our omelet. You can customize it however you'd like, just make sure to have your toppings ready. Now in a small frying pan, I'm gonna use an eight inch one here. With the stove on medium heat, I'll add one tablespoon of butter at the bottom and just let it melt. Swirl the pan so that it's thoroughly coated, even on the sides, and we add our egg mixture right in. We'll spread the mixture out so that it's flat and let the bottom cook for about a minute or so, and then we'll sprinkle on our cheese and herbs. I personally like just goat cheese crumbles and parsley, but cheddar and ham works really well here too. Kind of mix the top up a little bit, just don't touch the bottom, and then we'll cover it up for two minutes. This will help the top part cook and steam while also melting our cheese. An omelet can be rather intimidating to flip, but I promise you this one is foolproof that even an eight-year-old can make. If you want it cooked kind of longer, just keep the lid on for another 30 30 seconds. Now transfer it off the pan directly onto a plate and it's just gonna slide right off. And as you're doing that, fold the top of the omelet over as you go. You then get a fluffy, jiggly, completely delicious omelet that is mm. impossible to mess up. An excellent souffle omelet. This is a fun twist on the classic egg in a hole, except I'm doing egg in a bagel hole that also gives off breakfast sandwich vibes too. I mean, a bagel already has a hole in it, so I thought, why not? We'll prep the bagels later, but I'm gonna start by melting some butter. Each bagel half requires one tablespoon of melted butter, so since I'm cutting two bagels, we'll go ahead and melt four tablespoons of butter. As it starts to melt, I'm gonna add one clove of garlic that I've already smashed down, along with a sprig of rosemary. You can also use thyme or any other hearty herbs here. It'll just infuse the butter with a really nice, earthy flavor. Once that's done, we'll set it aside and prep our bagels. So before you cut your bagels, make sure that the bagel hole is wide enough, about two to three inches wide, so that you can fit the egg in later. If the bagel hole is too small, just go ahead and carve it out with your knife. I'll cut two of them in half and dip them into the melted butter. Then I'll place them face down on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Now we're gonna take our salami and kind of like a salami rose, but on a bagel, just place them inside the bagel hole, making sure it shields the bottom. Then I like to take some cheese that I've already sliced up thinly, place them along the sides of the bagel so that they melt and get all nice and crusty. Finally, crack the egg right into the hole. And it's okay if the whites spill out a little bit, it'll look more rustic and dramatic once you finish baking it up. Now carefully place them into the oven preheated to 375 degrees and bake them for 12 to 15 minutes or until the yolk is cooked how you prefer. For me, I like it around 12 minutes. Then take them out of the oven and let them cool slightly. To garnish, I like to sprinkle on a little bit of chopped parsley just to add some freshness and enjoy it nice and hot with a fork and knife type of breakfast. This is part bagel sandwich, part egg in a hole, and fully delicious. All the flavors you love about this classic pasta, except on toast with eggs. We're making cacio e pepe egg toast. I'm gonna take a slice of bread and put it in the toaster, let it get nice and golden brown. Now onto the eggs, we're gonna take two eggs, crack them into a bowl and season them with some salt and pepper. Then I'm gonna grate two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese into the mixture and whisk it all up. 
To cook it up, I'm gonna use a nonstick skillet, which I'll put to medium heat and I'll melt one tablespoon of butter. So instead of butter, you could always use olive oil, but I just prefer the creaminess that the butter adds to this dish. Then add the egg mixture in and just scrape the eggs at the bottom until little ribbons form. It's gonna start to curdle a little bit, but for me, I'm going for a soft scrambled egg. So I'm just gonna cook it until it's barely cooked through with a silky and creamy texture. If you prefer it cooked just a little bit longer, just leave it on for another 30 seconds to firm up. Tell me when to stop. Okay, that's probably good. I'm gonna grate a mound of Parmesan cheese right on top and another generous sprinkling of black pepper. I like sourdough toast because I think it complements this dish really well. Exciting toast that you're definitely gonna keep on repeat. Mm. Next is a traditional Turkish breakfast called chilbir with savory yogurt and vibrant flavors. It's my new favorite way to start the day. I start by adding one cup of whole milk Greek yogurt to a bowl. I prefer the full fat kind because it's creamier, but definitely use what you like. Then to that, I add one clove of minced garlic, juice from half a lemon, a pinch of salt, and this is optional, but I like to add some dill into my yogurt. It just adds more herby flavor. So once once you're done mixing it, just go ahead and set it aside, but don't put it in the fridge because it should be served at about room temperature. Now we make our yummy spice butter that gets drizzled on top of the yogurt. I'll melt one to two tablespoons of butter into a small saucepan, my mini pan here, and once it starts to melt, I'll add half a teaspoon of paprika and half a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper. So Aleppo pepper flakes are widely used in Mediterranean and Turkish dishes. They add a really beautiful color to the butter and it's also mildly spicy and it has a really unique, salty, somewhat raisiny flavor. But if you can't find it, a really good substitute would be kochukaru, which are Korean chili pepper flakes. Now let's poach some eggs. In a saucepan filled with water halfway up, I'll add one tablespoon of white vinegar and let it come to a rolling boil. Now drop in one or two eggs, whatever you'd like, at the pot's level, then let them boil for two and a half minutes. For more in-depth tutorial on how to poach the perfect eggs, go ahead and watch my other five breakfast video ideas where you get sweet and savory breakfast inspos. So go watch it after this video. Scoop them out with a slotted spoon and let the water drain out for about a minute. Now to assemble everything, we'll then pour our spice butter right on top of the yogurt, place the poached eggs right on top, add more butter if you'd like, and I like to sprinkle it with a dash of za'atar, which is another Mediterranean spice that has thyme and other spices in there, and of course more chopped dill. To serve, you can spread or dip this on some pita or even toasted bread, which is what I have on hand. The crustier the bread, the better since it just sops up the egg yolk and all the sauce with the yogurt. It's not too spicy and the flavor is just completely out of this world. I love finding new ways to use ingredients that we already have on hand. And this is a dish that I could eat over and over for breakfast, lunch, or even dinner. The savory kimchi pancakes is a classic Korean side dish that I like to mix with an egg for breakfast. And I actually have a kimchi pancake recipe in my cookbook, but today we're gonna make a modified version of it. First things first, our egg. I'm gonna crack it into a small bowl, whisk it up, and then we're just gonna set it aside. Now we'll prep our kimchi. Oh, that is pungent, but the older the kimchi, the better because it has more flavor, it's more concentrated, and it's actually perfect in this recipe. I'm gonna take about a cup and a half along with about two tablespoons of the juice and put it into a bowl. Then with scissors, I'm just gonna cut it into smaller chunks. Nate taught me this is the easiest way to cut kimchi and it doesn't make like a huge mess. Then in a large bowl, I'm gonna mix together three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour with a quarter cup of potato starch. The combination of these two flours together will help make the batter light and crispy. I have rice flour in my book, but I don't have any on hand right now, so this would be a really good substitute along with cornstarch. It just helps to lighten up the batter and make the pancakes kind of crispy. Mix the flours up real quick, then to the same bowl, we're gonna add our chopped kimchi, the whisked eggs, two tablespoons of chopped green onions, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and two teaspoons of sesame oil. And finally, a quarter cup of warm water. Mix it all up until you get a nice thick batter and then we're gonna fry it up. In a large cast iron pan, I'm gonna add some oil at the bottom, just enough to cover it, and then we're gonna add our pancake batter right on top. So with this, you can make little small ones or a big giant one, it's totally up to you. I prefer like a medium 
medium sized one so I split the batter in two. Cook each side for two to three minutes until it's golden brown and then just flip it over doing the same thing on the other side. Now transfer the pancake onto a platter and enjoy with some soy sauce dipping sauce. The recipe is also in my cookbook linked below. This savory breakfast kimchi pancake is one that I promise you'll get cravings for. I hope you guys found all of these breakfast ideas exciting. Check out my other videos for more breakfast ideas. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> molto bene, molto bene, buono. Cut. Mm -hmm. Creamy. Mm-hmm.